Welcome to lecture 24 on measure and integration. Um, in the previous lectures, uh, we had done the basic uh, theory of uh, measures and integration and today we will start uh, with uh, measure um, the notion of product measures and integration on product uh, measure spaces. So, to start with, uh, we will have uh, the notion of uh, product uh, sigma algebras. So, let us start with the two measurable spaces x a and uh, y b, be measurable spaces. Then uh, a subset of the product space x cross y, a subset E is called a measurable rectangle if it looks like a cross b, where a belongs to the sigma algebra a and b belongs to the sigma algebra b. Uh, the collection of all measurable rectangles or just uh, called as rectangles uh, will be denoted by the set R. So, the set R denotes the class of all uh, measurable rectangles which are subsets of the set x cross y and each subset is of the type a cross b, where a is in the sigma algebra a and b is uh, in the sigma algebra b. Uh, in general, we had already observed while discussing uh, the notion of uh, uh, semi algebras, algebras and uh, sigma algebras that sets of the type uh, a cross b, uh, where a comes from a sigma algebra and b comes from another sigma, sigma algebra. This collection of rectangles in general need not form uh, a sigma algebra. In fact, uh, it does not even form, it need not even form, it need not be even a algebra. But surely, A and B are being sigma algebras, they are also semi algebras and then we had shown that the rectangles A cross sets of the type A cross B surely form a uh, semi algebra. So, the, the set of all uh, measurable rectangles, they surely form a, a semi algebra of subsets of x cross y. So, uh, this being a, a semi algebra of subsets of set x cross y, and uh, in general may not be a uh, sigma algebra, we can generate a sigma algebra by these rectangles. The sigma algebra generated by these rectangles is denoted by A times B and A times B here is the uh, special symbol cross with a circle. So, A times B uh, will denote the sigma algebra generated by uh, the rectangles R. Uh, let us give a, a, another characterization of uh, these uh, uh, sigma algebras, uh, the product sigma algebra in terms of what are called the projection maps. So, uh, let us look at the map P x, P lower x, which is defined from x cross y to x as P x of x comma y is the first coordinate x and similarly, P y is a map from x cross y to y and is de denoted by p y of x y is y, the second coordinate. So, these two maps, they are called the projection maps, the projection of x cross y onto x and onto y. So, the claim is that in case we give uh, x cross y the product sigma algebra, then these uh, are uh, measurable maps. So, let us uh, prove this. So, x cross y to y on x we have got uh, uh, sigma algebra a on b we have got the sigma algebra b uh, on y we have got the sigma algebra. So, let us uh, okay. So, let us look at a. So, x cross y to x. So, here we have got the product sigma algebra a times b on x cross y and on x we have got the uh, sigma algebra A and P x is the map defined on x cross y to x and it is defined as P x x comma y is equal to the first coordinate x for every x comma y belonging to x cross y. So, our claim is that this P x is a measurable map when we give the product sigma algebra on x cross y. So, P x is A times B measurable. 
So, to show that what we have to show is the following that means for every set A belonging to the algebra A, if you look at P x inverse of A, then that belongs to the sigma algebra product sigma algebra A cross B. So, that is what we have to show. So, let us calculate. So, we note that P x inverse of A. So, it is all x comma y belonging to x cross y such that x belongs to A. So, that is the meaning of the set P x inverse of A, but that is same as x belongs to A and y is independent. So, this is A cross y, just the set A cross y and A belongs to uh, the sigma algebra A and the set y belongs to the sigma algebra B. So, this is actually a rectangle. So, this belongs to P x inverse of A actually belongs to a rectangle. So, which is uh, which generates the sigma algebra A times B. So, that shows that the inverse image of every set in the sigma algebra A under P x is in the sigma algebra product sigma algebra A cross B. So, that shows that P x inverse you know, that means P x is a A times B, B measurable set a you know, measurable map. So, P x is A times B measurable and similarly we can show that uh, the P y. So, P y which is a map from x cross y to y where P x P y of x comma y is y for every x comma y belonging to um, x cross y. So, then for every set B in the sigma algebra on y that is B, if we calculate P y inverse of B that is all x comma y such that uh, all x comma y such that uh, P y. So, y belongs to B and that is uh, same as x cross B and which belongs which is a rectangle. So, which is a rectangle and hence is in the sigma algebra A times B. So, for every set in the sigma algebra B, P y inverse of B is in the product sigma algebra A times B. So, that implies that P y is A times B measurable. So, this is a measurable map. So, uh, what we are saying is that the product sigma algebra A cross B, the product sigma algebra uh, A cross B is the sigma is a sigma algebra on the product space x cross y, which makes both the projection maps P x and P y uh, measurable. So, that is the property uh, we have just now proved. In fact, something more can be said, one can uh, even show. Uh, so, this is the proof, uh, we just let us go through the proof again. If A belongs to A and B belongs to B, then P x inverse of A is just A cross y, which is a rectangle and P y inverse of B is again a rectangle and hence uh, um, they both belong to the product sigma algebra and hence P x and P y are measurable. Uh, so, uh, what we want to show actually is that uh, A cross B on x cross y is the smallest sigma algebra of subsets of x cross y such that the earlier property holds namely this is the smallest sigma algebra of subsets of x cross y such that P x and P y uh, are both measurable. So, let us look at a, a proof of that. So, let us assume. So, let S be a sigma algebra of subsets of x cross y such that both P x and P y from uh, x cross y. And so, P x will be, uh, so let us write P x will be in x and P y which will be x cross y to y are, so that both these maps are measurable. We want to show that A times B 
A times B is also a, a sigma algebra of x cross y with respect to which both P x and P y are measurable and we want to show this is the small s that means, if s is any other sigma algebra so that P x and P y are measurable we want to show that it must be including A times B. So, A times B is inside s. So, let us uh, to prove this let us take a set. Uh, so, note if you take a rectangle. So, if you take a set A cross B which is a rectangle then this rectangle A cross B I can write it as A cross B can be written as A cross Y intersection with X cross B. So, this is uh, a simple uh, uh, set theoretic fact that A cross B I can write it as A cross Y intersection with X cross B because the first component A cross X will give me A and the second component Y intersection B will give me B. And this set A cross Y just now we saw it is nothing but uh, P X inverse of A and the second set uh, X cross B is P Y inverse of the set B. So, the set A times B A cross B can be written as P X inverse of A intersection with P Y inverse of B and we are given that the sigma algebra S has the property that both P X and P Y are measurable. So, as a consequence of this uh, for every set A in the sigma algebra A P X inverse A will belong to it belongs to the sigma algebra S and P y inverse also belongs to P y inverse of B also belongs to S because P x and P y are both measurable. So, this belongs to S. So, what we have shown is that if S is a sigma algebra with respect to which both P x and P y are measurable then S must include all rectangles. So, uh, our analysis shows so implies that all rectangles are inside the sigma algebra S and we wanted to show that the product the sigma algebra is inside S. So, it is enough to show that S is a sigma algebra. So, let us claim and try to prove that S is a sigma algebra, uh, S is a, a sigma algebra. So, what we have to show that first if you look at empty set then I can write um, empty set as equal to either P x inverse of empty set or P y inverse and hence this uh, belongs to uh, and so P uh, we want to sh show that S is a sigma algebra. So, that means oh sorry uh, S is already a given to be a sigma algebra sorry we do not have to prove this. So, what we have shown all the rectangles are inside S and S is a sigma algebra. So, that implies that A times B is also inside S. So, A times B is the smallest sigma algebra with respect to which both the projection maps are measurable. So, uh, so the let us go through the proof again. So, if S is any other sigma algebra of subsets of X cross Y say that both P X and P Y are measurable in that case. Uh, we want to show that S, uh, S this is a typo we should show that S includes A times B. So, let us take a set A in A and B in B then A cross Y is P X inverse of A as just now observed and X cross B is P Y inverse of B and both belong to S because P X and P Y are measurable. So, A cross Y and X cross B are both uh, sets in the sigma algebra S. So, their intersection must belong to the sigma algebra that means, A times B A cross which is A cross Y intersection with X cross B belongs. So, all the rectangles are inside S and S is a sigma algebra. So, all the sets in the product sigma algebra that is the smallest sigma algebra including rectangles must also come inside. So, that shows that the product sigma algebra is inside S. So, product sigma algebra is the smallest sigma algebra of subsets of x cross y with respect to which both the maps p x and p y are measurable. Okay. 
Uh, let us look at some uh, more uh, properties of uh, generating sigma algebras uh, on product spaces. So, let us look at this problem. Let us look at two sets x and y of course, non empty sets and let us look at two uh, families of subsets of x and y. So, c is a family of subsets of x and d is a family of subsets of y. Then we can form rectangles by elements of these families. So, let us denote c times d to be the collection of all sets of the type c cross d, where c is in the collection c and d is in the collection d. And now, so this is a, a collection of uh, subsets uh, of x cross y and we can generate a sigma algebra out of, out of it. So, on the other hand, we can first generate a sigma algebra out of the collection c and then generate the sigma algebra out of the collection d. So, there are two ways of generating sigma algebras of subsets of x cross y. The first is look at c cross d that is a collection of subsets of x cross y and look at the sigma algebra of subsets of x cross y generated by them. On the other hand, look at the sigma algebra generated by C. So, call it as S of C that is a sigma algebra of subsets of uh, x and generate the sigma algebra by the collection D. So, call that as S of D and then take uh, the rectangles generated by these two uh, sigma algebras. So, that is S C cross S of D. So, the question is are these two things equal? So, let us uh, observe that uh, since uh, C cross D is already contained in S of C cross D. Uh, so, the sigma algebra generated by them will be inside it. So, the first observation is that in general S of C cross D will be inside S of C cross S of D. So, that follows from the fact. So, this follows from the fact. So, we want to so, we have got a set x, we have got a set y, we have a collection of subsets of x, we have a collection of subsets of uh, y that is d and we have a collect. So, we form a collection of subsets of uh, x cross y that is c cross d. So, we can generate the sigma algebra by c, we can generate the sigma algebra by d and also we can generate the sigma algebra by c. Uh, c cross d. So, the question we are analyzing is is s of c cross s of d equal to s of c cross d. So, the first observation is we are going to note is the following. So, c is contained in s of. Uh, so, the question is whether this product is equal to this. So, the question uh, first observe that C is subset of S of C and D is contained in S of D. So, C cross D is going to be a subset of S of C cross S of D and we can generate the sigma algebra by these rectangles. So, that will be a subset of S of C times S of D. Okay. So, C cross D is always in the product sigma algebra, product of the sigma algebras S of C times S of D and so that implies the smallest one that is the sigma algebra generated by C times D must be inside S of C times D. S of D. So, this is always true that the sigma algebra. So, first take the product of the families C and D and generate the sigma algebra out, out of it, then that is always a subset of first generate the sigma algebras S of C and S of D and then they take their uh, product S of C cross S of D. So, the question is, is the other way around equality true and uh, we will show by an example that the in general the inequality um, the other way around equality may not uh, hold namely uh, that S of uh, C times S of D may not be a subset of S of C cross D. So, for that a simple example works. So, let us take x to be any set 
and y to be the set consisting of four elements 1, 2, 3 and 4. Let us look at C, the collection which consists of just the empty set and the collection D which consists of the empty set, the set 1 and 2 and the set 3, 4 and the whole set y. So, the collection D consists of four sets, the empty set, the whole space, the subset with two elements 1 and 2, the subsets with two elements 3 and 4. So, note if we generate the sigma algebra by C, that is same as the algebra generated by C. So, that will be just empty set and the whole space. So, S of C is empty set and the whole space x and the sigma algebra generated by D is equal to D itself, because D itself is a algebra at the complement of 1 and 2 that is 3 and 4 that is here, complement of 3 and 4 in the set y that is here, phi and empty, uh, um, empty set and the whole space are there. So, D actually in itself is a algebra. So, the sigma algebra generated by D is equal to, because it is a finite collection. So, the sigma algebra is the algebra itself that is equal to D. And if we look at the product, uh, the rectangles generated by C and D. So, the first component is always going to be empty set that means, C and uh, C cross D is just the uh, empty set. So, the sigma algebra generated by S of uh, uh, the sigma algebra generated by uh, the collection C cross D will be the empty set and the is complement that is the whole space that is x cross y. So, S of C, so S of C cross D consists of just two elements uh, namely empty set and the whole space x cross y. On the other hand, if you look at S of C cross S of D, then it will consist of the empty set, the whole space of course, and then it will consist of sets of the type x cross the set in y that is 1 cross 2 and of course, the set x cross 3 cross uh, 3 comma 4. So, there are uh, at least uh, the sets empty set, the whole space and the sets of the type x cross the two elements set 1, 2 and x cross the two elements set uh, 3 and 4. And of course, this is not going to be equal to uh, S of uh, C cross D. Okay. So, even uh, S of C cross D is not equal to even the rectangles. So, it cannot be actually equal to the whole of S of C times S of D also. So, uh, in general we cannot expect that given. So, in general we cannot expect that if you take two classes of subsets uh, one of uh, X and one of Y. So, C is a collection of subsets of X and uh, Y is a uh, D is a collection of subsets of Y. So, we can take the rectangles uh, from C and D uh, formed by taking elements from C and D. So, that is the sets uh, denoted by C cross D and then we generate the sigma algebra out of this collection. So, that will be the sigma algebra S of C cross D that may not be always equal to the sigma algebra generated by C times the sigma algebra generated by D. Uh, however, we would like to find some conditions under which we can ensure these two are equal and that is our going to be our next theorem. So, theorem says let x and y be non empty sets uh, and uh, C and D be families of subsets of x and y such that the whole space x can be represented as a union of elements from that collection C okay, and the space y also can be represented as union of elements from that collection D. So, uh, we are putting this condition this collection C and D are such that there is a sequence of elements of C which gives you the whole space x and there is a collection of uh, uh, elements from uh, collection of uh, sequence D i uh, in the collection D such that its union is again equal to y. Under this condition we are going to show that the sigma algebra generated by C cross D is same as the sigma algebra generated by C times the sigma algebra generated by D. So, this equality holds. Of course, we have already uh, proved that S of C cross D is a subset of the product sigma algebra S of C times S of D. We only have to uh, uh, prove the other way around inequality. 
So, what we have to show is the following namely, so we are given, so this is the fact which is given that x can be written as union of C i, i equal to 1 to n where C i is belong to C and y also can be written as a union of elements d j, j equal to 1 to infinity uh, where d j is belong to d and these two conditions we want to show imply that s of c s of uh, c times s of uh, d is equal to s of the sigma algebra generated by c cross d. So, we have already shown that uh, the sigma algebra uh, generated by c cross d is a subset of this. So, only to show, so we have to only show that left hand side that s of c times s of d is a subset of s of c cross d c cross d. So, this is what we have to uh, uh, show. To show this we will follow uh, the previous uh, the proposition which said that the product sigma algebra is the smallest sigma algebra with respect to which the projection maps are measurable. So, supposing we are able to show that the projection map p is s of c cross d measurable and p of y is also s of c cross d measurable. So, if we show this then the, what will mean? So, p x and p y are both measurable with respect to this sigma algebra s of c cross d. So, it must uh, include the product sigma algebra namely s of c cross s of uh, d. So, let us show that these two maps are measurable with respect to the sigma algebra s of c cross d. So, for that, so what we have to show is the following. So, let us look at the case of the projection map p x. So, p x is a map from x cross y to x and here we have the product sigma algebra s of c times s of uh, d okay, that is the product sigma algebra on x we have the sigma algebra s of c. So, we what we want to show is that uh, that p x is in fact uh, measurable with respect to the sigma algebra s of c times s of d. So, p x is measurable this is what we want to show. So, to show that let us take a set let. So, what we have to, sh to show this we have to show that for every set say a belonging to s of c should imply that p x inverse of a belongs to s of c cross d. So, that is what we have to show. So, let us first uh, observe what is uh, p x inverse of a, if a belong a is a subset of uh, x, if a is a uh, subset of x and belonging to, so let us not bother at present where it belongs. So, let us look at p x inverse of a that is going to be equal to a cross y by definition because a is a subset of x. So, the projection lies in a that means, uh, that means uh, the inverse image is a cross y and now by the given condition the set y is representable as uh, a union. So, this is a cross union of d j s j belonging to 1 to infinity where each d j belongs to the collection d. So, that means I can write this as union j equal to 1 to infinity of a cross d j. Okay. So, this uh, implies that p x inverse of a is written as union of rectangles which look like a cross d j. Now, d j s are inside the sigma algebra inside the collection d and if a belongs to c then this will belong to c cross d. So, and the union, so that will mean that, so the union will belong to the um, sigma algebra generated by c cross d. Why? Because a cross d j will belong to c cross d if 
A belongs to C. So, if A belongs, so if A belongs to C, then P x inverse of A just now represented as this belongs to C cross D. So, but what we want to show is not only for C, for S of C also this property is true. So, we apply the usual sigma algebra technique to prove this. So, let us write u to be the collection of all the subsets A belonging to S of C such that P x inverse of A belongs to S of C, uh, S of C times so belongs to S of C times D. So, let us look at this collection. So, what we have proved just now? So, we know that C is contained in U okay, and U is a collection of subsets of S of C. So, that is contained in S of C, but what we want? We want for every set A in S of C, P x inverse of A belongs to S of C. That means, we want to show that this collection U is actually equal to S of C and u is a subset of s of c and c is inside u to show um, that u is equal to s of c it's enough uh, to show that uh, the collection u is a so to show that u is equal to s of c it is enough to show so enough that u is a sigma algebra because once you use a sigma algebra, it includes C. So, the smallest one that is S of C will come inside. So, everything will become equal. So, we have to only show that this is a sigma algebra. So, let us look at empty set belongs to empty set belongs to U, because it is just um, uh, look at uh, it is just empty set is equal to P x inverse of empty set. Okay. So, empty set belongs to u and what about x? x is equal to p x inverse of y and y belongs to uh, s of c cross uh, y belongs to s of uh, c. So, this also belongs to so because y belongs to uh, okay, uh, oh sorry p x uh, uh, we want to show that uh, the whole space uh, a belongs to S of C. So, what we want to show is that X belongs to. Uh, so, look at P X inverse of uh, yeah, if you look at P X inverse of X that is X cross Y and that belongs to S of C cross D. So, that implies X belongs to this collection. So, X is also inside it. So, empty set and the whole space belong to it obviously. Let us look at the second condition that if A belongs to U, then that may implies P x inverse of A belongs to S of C cross D. So, that is given to us, but S of C cross D is a sigma algebra. So, it is closed under complements. So, that implies that P x inverse of A complement also belongs to S of C cross D, but P x inverse of uh, A complement is nothing but so that implies this set is nothing but p x inverse of a and complement of that so that belongs to s of c cross d and that implies that uh, a complement so that means that a complement belongs to u because uh, uh, oh sorry it should be other way around uh, p x inverse of uh, a p x inverse of a belongs that means this complement belongs to s c cross d. So, if a set belongs its complement belongs and this is nothing but the complement of uh, p x inverse of a complement. So, whenever a set has the a has the property that p x inverse of a belongs to the sigma algebra p x inverse of a complement also belongs to the sigma algebra s cross c cross d that means a belong a complement belong. So, u is closed under complements and finally, let us look at suppose a i is belong to u 
for a sequence i bigger than or equal to 1 belongs to u, that means p x inverse of a i is belong to the sigma algebra s of c cross d. So, these are usual uh, techniques for proving the sigma algebra. So, that implies so and this is a sigma algebra s of c cross d and p x inverse of a i is belong to it. So, a union of them p x inverse of a i is their union 1 to infinity also belongs to s of c cross d, but this union of the inverse image is, is inverse image of the union. So, that is p x uh, inverse of the union i 1 to infinity. So, that belongs to s of c cross d. That means, so we have shown whenever p x inverse of a i is belong to the sigma algebra, the p x inverse of the union also belong. So, that means implies that the union a i is 1 to infinity also belong to u. So, that proves that uh, u is a uh, sigma algebra of subsets of x. So, u is a sigma algebra include c. So, u uh, is equal to s of c that means, p x inverse of a is measurable. So, what we have shown is that if we look at uh, the map p x x cross y to x then it is s of c cross d measurable and the product uh, sigma algebra s of c cross s of d is the smallest one with respect to this is measurable. So, uh, that will prove that s of uh, c cross d includes the sigma algebra s of c times s of d. So, that is how uh, we prove that whenever the families c and d have the property that you can write. Uh, so, whenever x is a union of c i's and y is a union of d j's, where c i's in c and d j's in c, whenever this property is uh, true, then whether you take the classes c and d and take the rectangles and generate the sigma algebra, that is going to be same as generating the sigma algebras first and then uh, taking the product uh, sigma algebra. So, this is a useful theorem, which uh, gives us a, a dividend, namely the following. So, we uh, look at a consequence of this, which says that. So, we have uh, this is just a repetition of what the ideas that I have said to show that p x inverse uh, is measurable, we have to show this and uh, that can be written as p x inverse of c, because y is a countable union. So, you write this as a union. So, and the union splits into uh, this uh, union of c cross d j s and if c belongs to c. So, then this belongs because uh, this belongs to uh, c cross d, which is in its s of d, uh, c cross d. So, p x inverse of c is an element in s of c cross d whenever uh, c belongs to c. So, p x inverse of c is in s of c cross d for every c. So, to prove it is e for all s of elements of s of c, this property is true. We use the sigma algebra technique, namely look at the set u which is a collection of all the sets in S of C, which have this property. And then, uh, show that we already know that C is inside U and U is inside S of C. So, to prove the equality, one just has to show that U is a uh, sigma algebra. So, that uh, is easy, we have just now shown it is a sigma algebra. So, that proves uh, the fact that whenever uh, C and D are there, two classes of subsets of x cross y, then s of c cross d is same as uh, s of c times s of d. As a consequence of this, uh, let us prove the fact that on the plane B R 2, that is a sigma algebra generated by Borel subsets of R 2 is equal to the Borel sigma algebra of R times the Borel sigma algebra of R. So, to uh, prove this fact, let us just observe the following namely. So, on the real line, we have got u the collection of open sets and b r 2 b of r the Borel sigma algebra of r is nothing but the sigma algebra generated by open subsets of real line. So, let us look at the set R 2. On R 2, we have got the collection of, um, uh, we have got 
the collection of open sets so let, uh, and the sigma algebra generated by them. So, let us write u of r 2 the collection of open subsets of r 2 and generate the sigma algebra. So, b of r 2 is the sigma algebra generated by open subsets of r 2. So, whatever we are claiming is the following look at the Borel sigma algebra of r and look at the product of this with the Borel sigma algebra of r. So, that gives you the sigma algebra of subsets of r 2 and on the other hand you have got the sigma algebra of subsets of r 2 called the Borel sigma algebra of subsets of r 2 and what we want to show is that these two are equal. So, note on the left hand side. So, b of r cross b of r is nothing but the sigma algebra generated by open sets right times the sigma algebra again the same sigma algebra s of u. So, it is the product of the same sigma algebra with itself the Borel sigma algebra with itself and the Borel sigma algebra is generated by open subsets of the real line. So, this is uh, a perfect setting for applying our previous theorem. So, we have got x equal to r equal to y and c equal to d equal to open sets. So, if we look at so that so that implies so our previous theorem will imply that if you look at uh, c cross d so if you look at u cross u okay and then look at the sigma algebra generated by it that must be equal to the sigma algebra generated by uh, that must be equal to the sigma algebra uh, br cross uh, br cross br right so that must that is from our previous theorem but what we want to uh, observe here is that if you look at uh, u cross u okay so if you look at uh, the sets of the type u cross u then these are sets of the type so what is the set in the type u, u cross u so that is the sets of the type an open set uh, an open set u1 cross an open set u2 so these are the type of sets which belong to u cross so u1 and u2 both open and now if you take any open set say a e any open set in r2 then uh, this is effect from uh, uh, the basic uh, matrix spaces on uh, matrix spaces that the open sets uh, in r2 okay the sets of the type u1 cross u2 form a base uh, for the topology of uh, open sets uh, for the topology of uh, r2 so what we are saying is if we then this implies that e can be written as a countable uh, union of sets e i's 1 to infinity where each e i is a set belongs to u cross u so this fact is from uh, basic uh, topology namely r2 is second countable and uh, the sets u1 cross u2 form a base for open sets in r2 so this together imply that every open set in r2 can be written as a countable union of uh, sets e i and these e i's are uh, open rectangles you can call them each e i uh, is a uh, open set cross another open set. So, by that fact that will follow that uh, the sigma algebra s of u cross u is same as the sigma algebra on r 2 generated by open sets and that is b of r 2. So, that will prove uh, that, that the Borel sigma algebra uh, in r 2. So, that will prove 
that the Borel sigma algebra in R2 is same as. So, if you want to generate Borel subsets in R2, what you can do is you can generate Borel subsets in real line and then take the product sigma algebra Borel subsets cross Borel subsets and that will give you the uh, product of the product the sigma algebra of Borel subsets in uh, R2. So, with that uh, we come uh, to the conclusion of the description of uh, sigma algebras product products of sigma algebras on R2. So, the main thing is there to remember is the following namely given x and given y we can have the product set x cross y. Here we have got a sigma algebra A, here we have got a sigma algebra B. So, if we take sets A in A and B in B, so that gives us sets of the type A cross B. So, these kind of sets are called measurable rectangles. So, sets R equal to A cross B, where A belongs to A and B belongs to B give you subsets of x cross y. So, they are called uh, rectangles in x cross y and in general uh, these rectangles do not form. So, R is not a sigma algebra in general it is not a sigma algebra. So, you can generate. So, generate the sigma algebra out of this rectangles and that is denoted by a times b. So, this is called the product sigma algebra. So, the product sigma algebra is the sigma algebra generated by all uh, rectangles. And uh, another way of uh, generating uh, product sigma algebras is by uh, generating the sigma algebras. So, that uh, we looked at. So, here is x, here is y, there is a collection c here, there is a collection d here. So, we get C cross D a collection of subsets is a collection of subsets of x cross y. So, one, one can generate the sigma algebra by this collection on the other hand one can generate first the sigma algebra S of C here and generate the sigma algebra by this S of D here and then look at the product of them. So, these two are equal if we can write x as union of C i's, C i's belonging to C and y can be written as union of d j's, d j's belonging to d. So, under these conditions these two are equal um, and if this condition is not true then only you can say it is the left hand side is a subset of the right hand side. So, these are the product uh, uh, sigma algebras. So, uh, what we want to do uh, next? in the next lecture is the following. So, here is the set x, here is the set x, here is the set y. So, this is a subset E in the product uh, sigma algebra. So, what we want to do is that for, so this um, if we have got a notion of size of sets A in the sigma algebra A belonging to A and a notion of size for sets B b belonging to b, we want to know uh, what could be, uh, what are the sets for which the e contained in x cross y for which we can define the notion of uh, size. Uh, so, in a sense uh, what we are trying to do is that uh, we will try to uh, construct uh, a measure on the product uh, uh, of the, the sigma algebras a cross by, uh, by looking at the measures uh, on x and on y. So, we will do that uh, uh, in the uh, next lecture. So, uh, in the next lecture we will look at uh, measures uh, on the product spaces, how to construct uh, given a measure on the space x on a sigma algebra A and a measure nu on the uh, sigma algebra B of uh, uh, subsets of y, uh, how to construct a measure in a natural way on the product uh, sigma algebra A times B. Uh, that will also generate, uh, uh, generalize the notion of areas in R 2 and volume in R 3 and so on. So, we will continue this study of uh, construction of measures on product spaces uh, in our next lecture. Thank you.